We're here at ISTE Live 22. I'm here with Jason from Vex Robotics. I'm excited to talk about what's going on if, if, with Vex Robotics. And I guess first we'll start with just what is Vex Robotics, in case anyone doesn't know? Great, thank you for the pleasure to be here. So Vex Robotics, we like to say that we are the uh, world leader in STEM education. We said for a couple of different reasons. Number one, um, our solutions are used in over 160 countries worldwide. Uh, tens of thousands of students use our stuff every single day. Uh, we also have the world's largest robotics competition, so uh, 20,000 very enthusiastic kids uh, descend upon Dallas, Texas in May of this year, uh, representing over 40 countries. And the third thing is, is we have the VEX continuum. So as you can kind of see here on the wall, we have products that span kindergarten all the way through high school. So really being able to implement VEX across an entire school, um, across multiple grade levels, not only build the capacity of the students, but also build capacity of the teachers. If a school wants to get started with VEX, uh, what's, what's sort of the initial step, right? The baby steps into the process? Because um, I know for me, I don't see it a ton in school. I think in my own school, yep. it's maybe an after school yep. club, yep. but how do schools typically get started with it? So honestly, the thing about STEM and computer science, it's different in everywhere that you go. I've had the pleasure to talk to teachers all over the world and everyone's doing STEM and computer science differently. Uh, you have some, you have a, a very enthusiastic teacher uh, that wants to get started with the robotics team and that's great. Uh, or you have a, a very, you have a visionary uh, administrator, superintendent, or, or curriculum instructor that does want to implement STEM across K to 12 because they feel it's really important to be able to do. Um, with VEX, since we're worldwide, we also have countries. Like Barbados is a great example. Barbados has a service-based economy, uh, but. With COVID, that of course shut down, they realized they had to transfer their economy to more of a knowledge-based economy. So they're implementing our solutions across all students across the entire country. So really, it just depends upon what your goals are, what you want to be able to do, and what you can actually implement and absorb as a school. Of course, teachers are being asked to do more every single day with everything that's going on. So the last thing you want is um, implementation fatigue amongst your teachers. So really, it's about what you're comfortable doing and what you want to be able to do. And what we try to do is provide a solution for you. If you want an after school club, you want to do a summer camp, you want to roll out a semester worth of stuff, whatever it is you want to be able to do, we want to provide the answer for you so you feel comfortable doing that. How far has VEX come over the years and where are you guys headed? I know, you know, ISTE is usually a perfect time to kind of launch some things yeah. and talk about where the company and the product wants to go. So yeah. how's that working at VEX? So that's, that's a great question. So VEX actually got started, our two founders, uh, Tony Norman, Bob Mimlich, are two engineers. Uh, they actually got started back in the late 90s in Tony's garage mentoring a high school robotics team. So that's actually how VEX originally got started to where we are now with offices all over the world and everything I mentioned. Um, at the very beginning. Uh, what we've worked really hard the last couple years is building out our STEM continuum. So starting with VEX 1, 2, 3 with our very young students and going to VEX Go, VEX IQ, VEX EXP and our work cell to build out that STEM continuum. What we're really focused on right now is building out a computer science continuum. Uh, so we developed VEX Good VR during the pandemic. Uh, which is our virtual robotic system so teachers and students can stay connected to STEM and computer science during the pandemic. Uh, but it's been successful beyond we ever imagined for it, for, for it to do. So now we have teachers in school using VexCode VR. We want to continue now to build out that computer science continuum. Um, I'll actually be at CSTA in July talking about the software developing to help transition students from blocks to text-based coding. It's called Switch. That's something we're really excited about. We're going to be doing beta testing with schools in the fall on that. So we're really excited about being able to build out a computer science continuum, just like we've built out our STEM continuum for the last few years. So I'm hearing we're advanced now into VR, which I think is, is so cool. And you said block to text. Can you explain that just a little yeah, bit more? So if you think about teaching computer science, we know from research that blocks is a great way to begin students with computer science because it allows you to focus on sequencing and algorithm development and those types of things and not do I put a, a, a sint do I put a comma here, do I put a parenthesis here, all those different syntax errors. But we also know that transitioning students from blocks to text can be very difficult. So going from a block-based environment to now saying go code in text is not really helpful for students. So we're building in VexCode, our coding software, scaffolding for students so they don't just have to go into text, 
all want it. It's not, it's not a one transition. You have to go into text all on their own, but instead we can actually scaffold that process so they can go from blocks to text in a more scaffolded way. And we're really excited about that working with researchers to be able to do it well and to be implemented correctly. And that's what I mentioned we do in the beta test in the fall for that. I'll be presenting on that next month at CSTA. I don't know if your background is in education, but clearly you've been involved in education because that word scaffolding really <laughs> resonates, right? Yeah. That's so awesome. No, that, I mean, just me personally, uh, I, I have thought of VEX in terms of the leader in the robotic space over the years. Uh, to hear that you guys are are continuing to advance to the point at which you want to scaffold, right? We, we see that it's for every age and we're going from one age level to the next, but also now really thinking about uh, those computer science skills yes. and the coding, going from the block to the, I don't know much about it, but it sounds like that's yeah. the way we're headed. So uh, if schools, districts, even individual teachers are interested in learning more, where do they go? Who do they talk to? Yeah, so the best place to go is just vexrobotics.com. You can see everywhere on there. If you want to see the free curriculum that we have, you can check that out at education.vex.com. If you want information about how to get started, you can go to getstarted.vex.com. But any of those three websites will give you the information that you need to help you get started with Vex. Excellent. Congratulations. Great Thanks for everything. You. Really appreciate your time. It was wonderful talking with you. Yep. Thanks a lot.